Today we are learning about how to make instructional videos for art teachers to use in their classroom so that way they can create video lessons for the students to watch and it allows the kids to watch the videos in a shorter amount of time than it would take to do a live demonstration. The new Marzano, they want you to get 90% or more of your students doing whatever the indicator says. So if all the kids can watch the video, that's, that's 100 percent. So it's really great for the appraisal process. If your administrator comes in and you're using a video, all the kids are engaged, all the kids are using the video, it helps with a couple of them. And then it helps the kids remember the steps. If a kid is absent, I will have a video, maybe I'll put two videos on the screen playing at the same time, or while the kids are working, I'll play the video from the previous week from part one, and then they can kind of get caught up. It's great for kids who are absent. Before I did videos, I would have like a huge stack of lessons, like all the demo projects, one for each class, because you have to do it like five or six times. Well, now you only have to do it once, and then you never, ever have to do it again, unless you have a kid who just needs that one-on-one -on -one instruction. It's also good for sub plans. I left my long-term sub with a nice, you know, big like thumb drive, a flash drive, with a lot of videos, and I just gave her all the projects on the videos. At least she had something that she wasn't starting from scratch. The best thing is that you can do, like you know when you go on Pinterest and you see those projects and you're like, that is an awesome project. How in the world did they get the kids to do that? You know, because it's a lot of steps. Like some of the stuff requires a lot of steps. So you can do more complex projects in less time because you can chunk them into different parts and the kids can follow along and get it done faster because you're not spending so much time demoing. The demo is only five minutes instead of 20 minute demo and then only 10 minutes to work. So it's kind of nice. Okay, any and all lessons are great, especially ceramics and sculpture because the worst thing about clay is that it dries out. And if you don't get the kids working fast enough, you're going to have to save it for next time, which is a pain. So if you can like do the video five minutes to get working, they can almost have a whole 40 minutes if you do it fast enough to get their project done in one day. And then they can paint next time. So it's great for, like I said, those multi-step processes. I like to chunk the videos. So like, like the penguin one is a kindergarten project. I did, I think, four or five videos for that project, and it took us six weeks to get it done, but they all turned out amazing. You know, like, they did. It was like a kitchen sink project. You know, we did painting and tearing and cutting and shapes and every, even sewing with yarn. It was all in there for kindergarten, you know, but it was great because they could actually accomplish something that, you know, looked really cool when it was done, so. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to set up and how to record. So you can make it as fancy or as basic as you want, depending on your time and your energy and what you want to do. I'm going to show you the way that I do it. There are other ways to do it. This is just what I have found that works for me. So that's what I'm going to show you. So usually there's two different ways you can record. You can record top down. You can get like a tripod, do like the big fancy, top down like Cassie Stevens style with the hands and the you know the Facebook videos like the cooking ones and you can get all kinds of fancy like that or you can use a box and your kickstand on your iPad and you can just record like like a 45 degree angle I like so we use in yeah. the art office <clears throat> these little stands um, and so you can order these off Amazon. I think they're less than $15, and this is adjustable for whatever angle you want. And I've been really happy with this, so I'll leave this out too for you to mm -hmm. look at that. And if you wanted to do like top down, you could probably just elevate it or something, you know. So. Okay, I like this way because when a kid is sitting at a table, that's kind of the same angle they're looking at their paper. When you're filming, you want to think about like where you're going to set up your space. I like to record where the students are going to be working. So I like to record at the table the kids are going to be sitting at. 
Sometimes like, during the year I'll have like my labels for the tables and the numbers on the tables and every once in a while he goes, hey, that's my seat. <laughs> it's kind of cute. So, and then, but to think about like what else is in your picture? Like don't try to have a lot of clutter. Make sure it's a clear space. And there are videos that I have where my hair has made a cameo appearance. <laughs> My, I don't have it on today, but like, you know, that nice lanyard that we have to wear with a thousand things attached to it has made appearances in some of the videos because it's hanging down and it's got, you know, when you, and think about too, like, whether you're left-handed or right-handed and which side you want to be on because it's not much fun to watch a video of your arm hair, <laughs> okay, so just, you know, it's like, like that, you know. So try to think about, you know, like going in on a different angle when you're recording instead of going straight, I think, top in, you know, think about that so they can still see what you're doing. And then obviously lighting. I just use this. I just use the regular lighting in the room. I've never had an issue with it. I do keep in mind sometimes when I'm recording in the morning, because I get morning light coming in my room, that sometimes some of the tables have these nice streaks of light going across them, so I don't work there. But just, you know, if your lighting in your room is not the greatest, if you attend the photographing artwork session, yep. you can get a nice light kit, you know, so that works too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my iPad on the screen and I'm gonna kind of show you how to record an iMovie. So you can record an iMovie or you could just do it in the camera app but I'm going to show you how to do it in iMovie. Okay. And like I said before, I like to kind of, and because it's on the appraisal, chunk into digestible bits. It's on there somewhere. I know it is. So if you break your videos into different parts, you can do it where you do the whole project in one video, or you could do part one, part two, part three, part four, or however many parts you need. I like to do the different parts because it keeps the videos to under about five minutes of video, and then that way the kids don't lose attention when they're watching it. Plus, I don't want to give them more than they can actually get done in one class period. Now, if you're in more middle school, high school, your situation might be different. With it's a little different for middle and high versus elementary. Your kids might be able to go back and reference the videos on their own. My kindergartners can't, so I just do it. We do it differently. Okay. Is it working? There it goes. So on the iPad, you could, if you wanted to, just go to the camera and make a video. Then it saves it to the photos, and you can totally do it that way. Or, if you go to iMovie, you can, in iMovie, make a new video, hit the plus, go to movies. Depending on what version of iMovie you have on your iPad, it might look a little different. If it's not, up, if it's not the latest one, then you hit create movie. And you can see these are all the movies that are in my photos. But I'm just going to hit create movie down at the bottom. And then all I have to do is over here, there's a little camera. You tap the camera. It also tells you what to do here, but you can tap the camera. And then you can record. So I'm going to put this over here. I always record landscape, not portrait. That's just my preference. I think it looks better that way. I think I have maybe one video. So now what I would do is I would say, oh, I got all this clutter in my background. I don't need this stuff in here. So I would want to move all these things out of the way because they're just, they're distracting. Now, if I don't want the chairs, you see how you can see like the chairs back here? I can crop that out later. So then I would take my piece of paper, I'd put it here and I'd do my recording. I'd hit record and I'd record it. And then that's basically it. Now, I don't do the voice when I'm recording. I do it later. Because as you're recording and you're doing your demo, by the time you're done, you may say to yourself, oh, I have 
10 minutes of video that I just recorded. My students don't need to sit there and watch me draw the same circle 20 times on the piece of paper. I can kind of go in later and edit some of that out, which we'll talk about after we do our video recording. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give everybody a chance to think about what project you want to do. I have some basic materials set up, so I have scissors and glue and paper. If there's anything else you want, just ask. But let's try to keep it to dry media, just so it's not too messy. And you are going to, hopefully you brought an iPad or something that you can use. If not, I have the cart open if you want to borrow one. And you're going to find a place where you can set up. If you need, like you can totally do it down here. You don't have to prop it up. It just gives you a little bit more distance for bigger projects. So if you would like to borrow a crayon box, I use, why I use this, I don't know. I don't even have this printer anymore. But this is the box that I like. It's just, it's my box and I'm going to keep it. So You get used to something, you don't want to change it. So You can use a box, like a crayon box, or you know, like the little Tupperware boxes. Anything, or a stack of books. Anything that gets it about maybe five or six inches up off the table, just so you have that nicer angle for recording. So you're going to go to iMovie or the camera. If you do it in the camera app, all you have to do to get it into iMovie is you go to videos over there on the side, and you find it, and then you just stick it in there. Hit the plus. And then it puts it in your video for you. So if you do it in the camera, why would you want to do it in the camera? I don't know. Maybe it's just your personal preference. Okay? So I like to do it just in iMovie, though. So if you want to do that, you can. It's a fairly new concept. It's been around for a couple of years, probably about five, ten years. Other people have done it in other places. And we're just bringing it to Pinellas County to kind of help our teachers be able to maximize their instructional time with their students by allowing them to film their lessons, it shortens the length of the time that they're teaching and it gives the kids more time to actually work on their projects. I have found that the kids, again, get more time to work on their art projects, which allows them more time to create, more time to get more in depth with their lessons and to develop more complex results. Uh, several teachers use it throughout the district, district, but we are trying to expand it so that way more teachers are using video lessons in order to help all of our students across the county be more effective with their use of their time management. The students love it. The students just really enjoy watching the videos and they love the fact that they can go back and watch the video again if they didn't get all the steps the first time and they love the fact that they know if they miss a day of art then when they come back the next week that the video will be there to kind of get them caught back up faster and then they didn't really miss anything. So I'm just going to use one of the videos that I made not too long ago towards the end of the year that I did with second grade. It's basic weaving. There it goes. It's already done, but I can kind of walk you through the process of how I edited it and kind of show you how to edit yours. So in iMovie, the basic layout is this is your video. This is kind of like your, oh, what's a good word for it? Like storyboard. Think of it like a storyboard. Down here is the entire video from start to end. This is just the frame that I'm selected. So this is kind of like your, your mouse, your cursor. As you move, you can see the bar stays in the middle and the movie moves. So it just kind of lets you pick where you are in the video and where you're going to edit. So one little fun trick is if you have a video that just seems to go on for miles and miles and miles, you could take your two little fingers and you can pinch them Mine's already as short as it's going to go. But you can, if yours looks like this, and it just goes on forever, you can take your two fingers and you can pinch them together. It's not making the video any shorter. It's not adjusting the length. Of, you're not deleting anything. You're just making those thumbnails smaller so you don't have to travel as far. Okay? You can save a little bit of gas money. You don't have to go as far. So. Now, when you have a clip, say like, we'll start with this one. So the first thing, let's talk about 
is, we'll go down to action. So at the bottom there's actions, there's speed, volume, titles, and filters. So the first one is actions. You can simply split it. Why would you want to split it? Maybe because there's a bunch of stuff in there you want to get rid of because you don't need it, you changed your mind, you don't like it, or it's just boring and nobody wants to watch you draw 10,000 bricks on the side of a building. So you can hit split, it separates it, and then say, okay, I want to delete to right here. So from here to here, I want to get rid of it. I don't need it. Maybe I made a mistake and I refilmed it and I want it gone. I hit split again. I can select the one that I want. The yellow means it's selected. And then I can hit the trash can all the way down the bottom. And now it's gone forever and I don't ever have to see it again. So I'm going to hit undo. Oh no, I deleted it by accident. I needed that. There's two ways to bring it back. One, you can hit undo and it brings it back. Or if you simply tap this clip, you can just drag it on out and it's still there. Okay? So if I just like, it's coming back. Look at that. So if you have something, it's, it's still there. It hasn't gone away. It's just hiding. The next one under actions is going to be detach audio. Why would you want to detach the audio? Because the bell was ringing when you were filming. Because they made an all call for little Johnny to go to the bus circle while you were filming. They reminded you that you're supposed to be at a staff meeting while you're filming, which hopefully you're going to go to, you know. So you can hit delete or detach audio from the clip. Now this is not my voice recording. This is all the background noise that was going on when I was recording my video. You can then just hit delete and it's gone. There's a second way, there's two different ways you can get rid of that audio. That's one way. And then the next thing you might want to do is duplicate. So under actions, you might want to do duplicate. Maybe you're doing a lesson and you want to have it like at the beginning of the video and at the end of the video you want to repeat the importance of a step. So you could duplicate that clip to have the same clip twice. I like to use the duplicate feature for making my title pages. I just take a photo. In case you didn't notice, when you go into the camera, right over here, you can tap photo. And you could take a still picture. And it puts it, you got to hit use photo. It puts the still picture in your video and does the nice little Ken Burns effect for you. So, and then that's good for like a title page or something. So if you want to take a picture of your art project, stick it in there. Then if you do the title, you can duplicate that picture and you can have it in there as many times as you want. Okay, so that's a fun little thing to play with. If you select the photo, you'll see like right here, you can adjust the Ken Burns. So that's the little fun zoomy thing. And if you tap on it, you can pick where you want it to start and where you want it to end. Well, tap the last one. It, right? you, don't really want that. you can turn it off, yes. Okay. Now it's disabled. It's not on there. Now I can tap it again. And now it's back on. It says Ken Burns enabled. So that's a fun little thing. That's only for the photos, not the videos. The videos don't have Ken Burns. If you want to, on your clips. So now I have selected a clip up here. I can take my two fingers and I can rotate it. Okay. And you can go back the other way too. If you want to put a picture somewhere in the middle, you just tap where you want it to go. Then you can come over here, you can tap photos, choose the picture that you want, and it sticks it in there. Okay? So now it's in there. One last thing, if you tap a clip, this little guy right up here is your new best friend. 
He is the zoom. Say you got distractions in the background, you want to get rid of them, or you want to really make sure the kids are paying attention to one specific thing that you're drawing, you can zoom in on it. You can only go so far, but you can get pretty close. Like there's where I started, and you can see, and get pretty close to that. So that way they can really see what you're doing. Down here at the bottom, the next thing is speed. This is a fun one. You can make it go super slow. If you didn't leave yourself enough talking time, you can slow it down. And as you can see, if I have this clip selected, it's only affecting this clip. So if you haven't split the whole thing into different chunks, you're going to want to go and split it so it's only affecting the part that you want it to. So if I only want to speed down the second half of this clip, I would want to make sure I split that so this side isn't getting affected, okay? So you can then go to speed, you can go super slow, or even faster. Now it only goes two times faster, which will save you a little bit. If you want them to still see what you're doing, I, you can speed it up, but if it's a lot of dead time, like if you don't know, if you don't have anything to say, I'd suggest just cutting it out and deleting it. Because otherwise, the kids are just going to sit there bored watching you draw whatever it is you're drawing. Okay, so just think about that when you're doing it. You can also freeze, and it'll hold it in that spot. So let's try here. We're going to hit freeze. So that little spot has been frozen. Now, I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm just zooming in to make the clip longer. I'm not adjusting the length of it. So I can go in and I can actually like make that freeze longer and shorter. If you look here, you can see that that clip, the time length is changing on it. So it's freezing it for 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, however long you need to freeze it for. Okay, so then the next thing is titles. Titles, you can do them during the middle of your video. I don't do them very often during the middle of my video because the kids aren't paying attention to the words. They, got, they don't have time to read. They're just watching the video. So, but you can if you want to. You could oops, make something pop up in there. Like you could pick. Okay, so fun little tip. This one, like they're all here. Okay, you got all these different things. This guy right here, the next one in, this is the one for your theme. How do you change your theme? You go up to here, right there, that little gear looking thing, and these are your project settings. And as you pick different themes, this guy changes. This one is the one that's attached to your theme. So if there is one that you really like, like that postcard thing, because you're doing something to, you know, maybe you're doing a project with postcards, and you really want to use this theme, well then you can go in there and select it. Okay. Then on to, and there's a couple more things, like you can change, like if you look here, it says opening, middle, closing, they all have three different locations that they can be put into. Unfortunately, on the iPad version, there is no scrolling credits. Scrolling credits is only available on the computer version. To get a transition, you have to split a clip. So I have to go to Actions, Split. Then it puts this little line right here. I can make it as fancy or as basic as you want. So it could be nothing. If it's nothing, you won't ever notice it. It's a good process. Other than like it just changes to the next clip. Okay, so here you can get to all the other ones. I usually use Dissolve because it's a nice like gentle transition. But you can play around with the transitions. You can adjust the transitions to make them more or less. The voice record. You press the microphone, you hit record. And then you start talking. And you record your video. It's, you, know, you just kind of talk along as it goes. First you do this, then you do that. You, know. you are welcome to record just straight from the iPad. You will get a little bit of white noise in your background, but it's not that bad. It is tolerable. I think I forgot to bring them today, but if you have a pair of the Apple headphones, 
with the little microphone on it or any headphones that has a microphone or supposedly that you use for yeah phone call. like you know the yeah like any headphones with the mic built into it should in theory record audio and it'll help to eliminate all of that background noise so here's my recording of my voice it's the blue one so this the way they set it up is you have your video then you have your audio and then this is green because it's in the background you can tap these clips the sound clips and edit them very similar to how you can edit your video clips because you can see all the actions down here so you can split them maybe you coughed in the middle and you have to edit that part out maybe the intercom went off or somebody came and knocked on your door you can get rid of all that stuff the same as you can with the video you can all well the best one that you're going to want to know is going to be the volume because i don't recommend taking it all the way to a 500 be if i recommend just talking louder and doing it again because it's going to sound a little weird. It's going to have that weird distortion to it. So just try to keep that at 100. Now, if you tap on, and I'll show you how to get the music in there in a minute. But you can see that my music, I have decreased the volume on because background music should be in the background. If the music is too loud, the kids aren't going to pay attention to what you're saying. They're not going to be able to hear you. I like to keep the music just loud enough for those friends who need a beat to pay attention. <laughs> and then the last thing is if you go to audio, this is how, okay, so you see how to get the, sound, like the voice recording in there. So to do the voice recording, wherever it is you want to record, <coughs> you don't have to start at the beginning. Maybe you just coughed in the middle of your recording. <coughs> so. If you go to audio, you can go to theme music at the top, and here's where you will find. <laughs> all the fun ones. This is what I to, or iMovie gives to you to use for free. For those people who just don't have time to make their own music. You can, all you would have to do is to hit use. Now it puts it in as the background. If it doesn't, put it in as background music. If it comes in in the foreground, if it comes in blue, if it comes in blue, you want to tap it and select background. And then you just have to click that yellow bar and stretch it all the way through your movie. Even though it does take time to learn the process up front, in the end, you end up saving time because you don't have to set up as much stuff for demoing every single day. And you also don't have to, you get more time to work with the students. It gives the students more time to work on their projects. So in the, end, in the beginning, it does take more time, but at the end, you end up getting more time back for the students. Some teachers are very excited about it and they jump right in. Some teachers are a little hesitant, but once they get their feet wet and they see the benefits of it, then they love it and they just want to take it and go with it. The process of creating videos is definitely the, the wave of the future. It's, the students learn from videos a lot. They go on YouTube, they watch how-to videos all the time on their own about how to do all kinds of different things. So bringing that into the classroom just helps to connect with the students and helps them kind of take what they do on their own as part of their culture and their generation and it kind of brings it into the classroom so they can kind of, it helps them learn in a way that they already know how to learn.